get together and kind of like powwow and, and think what do we need to do for today, uh, what, what's at the top of our agenda and priorities, and that takes like only like 15 or 20 minutes. And then um, the rest of the morning, I'm kind of doing like whatever of those priorities are done on computers because our computers are in the office. So we're just sending emails, typing documents, printing things. And then in the afternoon, um, that's actually when the, um, the, mem the members of the program, the recovery program here, finish their classes. So they'll come back here and uh, we'll have like different activities to organize with them. So in the afternoon, I'm organizing activities for like researchers and statistics out there, and that's kind of what I base my opinion on. Um, and so I would say, um, of the people who stay here, maybe at least half are are dealing with some kind of like substance abuse or addiction that they're actively trying to get rid of, or maybe they're just still really deep in the in that lifestyle. And then maybe the other half are not dealing with that type of a struggle. But um, the rising rent cost actually has been a huge factor lately because of this area and um, just how much it costs to, like, if you were to think about your bedroom that you live in, or maybe you share with a brother and sister, like, I wonder how much it costs for your parents to rent that room for you. Your half of the room or whatever might be like um, 400 something dollars a month. And so, or, and, and then much less if you're a single mom who has like three kids and no, no father or no other support from other family members, then uh, she has to rent like a whole apartment with, by herself, which is like probably $2,000 a month. <laughs> and so it's, and then <laughs> the other thing is if she has her kids and she can't work during the day because she doesn't have childcare, and childcare costs like twenty dollars an hour, or, or maybe fifteen, if you're willing to risk how qualified your babysitter is um, for your children. Um, so the biggest challenge I think has been for single moms. Society nowadays requires more and more education to get jobs that pay a living wage. So actually, having um, I heard a statistic that if you don't have a high school diploma then you're earning only 5% of the money, on average, that you need to sustain your living costs. Wow. So, yeah, there are quite a few people who stay with us who don't have their high school diplomas. Mostly people come to us because they hear about us by word of mouth. Since we've been around for 50 years, it's really well known in the community that we're here and that our doors are open to anybody, uh, regardless of their, their background or um, what they're dealing with. As long as people are being respectful to one another, we can have them here. Um, so yeah, people usually just, just come to us. And we have a, a hotline number. So um, they'll usually call us on the phone and we'll say, yeah, we have a bed open. It's on the second floor. Can you climb up the stairs because we don't have an elevator? <laughs> and then they'll come in person to you. Because we also have a lot of kids living here, maybe 30, 30 kids, some of them are your age. And so I'm thinking they would probably really appreciate like um, either playing, maybe playing together. Maybe the younger kids, you could be like big brothers to the younger kids and play, play with them, like read these books with them or play some sports if you, if you yeah. Yeah, have a lot of energy. We have a big yard out here actually, you can play, um, like kick around a soccer ball or like play some games in the yard with the kids. Or you could even uh, organize like some craft activities or like some things that you might do in class. I was very tired of paying very high rent in San Francisco for a very poorly maintained tiny little apartment. And I started to think about how much rent I was paying compared to how much containers cost and realized I was paying like a container and a half in rent every month for a little tiny place. So eventually I decided to just buy, I had previously worked out of shipping containers in a, in a big warehouse. They're often used to just subdivide. So I decided to buy an extra container and turn it into a house. I think that it'll 
be good for lower cost housing, but I wanted to make sure that, like you see a lot of, you, you know how you see tents with refugees on the news and stuff? Yeah. You see a lot of projects where it's like design at a distance, where people are building something, but they don't want it themselves. So they lower their standards and also just don't understand some of the details. So I wanted to make sure that I wasn't doing design at a distance. I wasn't trying to make housing for other people over there. I wanted to make sure that I was making something that I actually liked. Well, there are about 800 homeless people on the streets of Richmond. About how many shipping containers would it take to house all those people? I mean, it depends how you do it. So this is a 20-foot container, and it's meant to be in to have everything you need, as you said earlier, but to also encourage you to share with other people. So this has a small kitchen. The ideal is that you have something like the warehouse next door where you can have like bigger parties and a bigger kitchen and more shared space. So my ideal would be that, you know, if it's 800 people, you should have 800 20 foot containers and then they can move them around if they decide to go somewhere else, if they'd like to put it in someone's backyard. Um, you can certainly do it with less and people often do, but I'd rather, you know, spend a little more money to give people a house that will actually make them more happy and more independent. The coolest thing that's happened recently is the laws changed California-wide, so for the whole state, to let anyone who has a normal single-family house put a shipping container or other tiny house in their backyard. And they're the local cities used to try to make that hard to do, but they're not allowed to anymore. The state said local cities have to allow this and they have to make it cheap to do. So it would be very hard, if not impossible, to find one site to put 800. But in Alameda County, where we are, um, there are something like 60,000 single family homes, all of which have backyards, all of which could have one or more, or many of which could have one or more tiny homes built out of shipping containers or something else in the backyard. So we can actually spread this out and then also hopefully generate some money for people to put these in their backyard. So for example, someone could put this in their yard, agree to let someone else live there, and then get some of the rent money from the person living there to be able to afford to stay in their home. Because we import many more things into the country than we export, and containers are the same size whether they're full of things or empty, many come here and then have only gone like one trip like typically it's from many here from china to here like it used once or a couple times and then they're just sold for scrap value so an empty container before i convert it costs like twenty one hundred dollars delivered real big challenge is figuring out where to put these there's all kind of beautiful tiny homes that people make and if you look on craigslist you can find them for really 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 cheap like less than they cost to build sometimes um, no one has really figured out where to put them and by making these factory built houses under California state law and using this backyard house law, I'm able to put them anywhere in California. So the focus is going to be California for a while. It's also, I didn't real I knew that housing was short here, but I didn't realize how severe something like half of the units that need to be built in the next 10 years in the country to keep up with housing demand have to be built in California. So we have half of the housing shortage for the whole country. So I spent a lot of time thinking about like why, why isn't housing any better than it was 50 years ago? And I think that it's because it's not built like a product. It's built on site. You'll see like wood frames left out in the rain and then like sometimes people will just not work on them for weeks and there's all this permitting and stuff. So I'm treating this whole thing as like it's a cell phone or a car where I'm building it in, you know, it's a fun factory but in a factory. and making it as fast as possible. So right now it's between 100 and 200 person hours of work. So like me and two friends can build one in a week to two weeks. It's fast for a house, but it's slow for a product. And if we want to get these really cheap to where everybody can afford them, we got to get it got to get it a lot faster eventually. And they rent for $1200 a month really fast. Like as soon as I put it up on Craigslist, it rents out. And often I don't even put it on Craigslist. It'll just be like a friend of someone else who lives here will rent it. Um, so it's really easy to rent them and they rent for about a tenth of what they cost to build per month. So in one year of renting them, I pay for the whole cost to build it. The basis for our idea was using the rescue mission idea of writing to the, um, the homeless and the people that they were taking care of there, but then also keeping in mind that sustainability startup aspect that we kind of learned about with Box House. So our final idea was to have a service where you can 
get an address, you go on the site, and then you can just write a letter. Because you gotta remember that a lot of this problem isn't just physical stuff like food and amenities, it's also the emotional support that they need to help get out. Thank you so much for watching. We and, appreciate your support. And make sure to click the link in the description to check out our website.